Now that we have our block fused in place, we're ready to start stitching it down. And as we discussed earlier, the beauty of appliqueing with fusible thread is that I don't have to have any pins holding this in place. It's not going to shift and slide on me as I stitch. And I'm not going to have a pucker when I get to the end because one layer moved faster than the other. There are several things that you need to think about when you're ready to stitch. One of them that I pay close attention to is what foot I'm using. And the foot that I have chosen to use today on my Bernina 440 is the number 20 foot. I love it because it's got a great opening right here so I can see exactly where I'm going. But the other wonderful thing is that it has a groove down the back so that if I'm doing heavy stitches like satin stitches, the, it, they don't get caught on the foot. The foot just floats right over them. I use this foot all the time, even when I'm doing Texture Magic, because I have good visibility and it flows nicely. I love these because they're so simple to put on. You just use your little clip and you're ready to go. I have switched to a darker thread. I want something that's really going to show up. I want to make sure that I start on one of the straighter edges of this heart. I don't want to start in what I call the cleavage or on the point because both of those take a little bit of special attention. So I'm going to start over here on one of these sides and I always begin by pulling up my thread. So if I just hit my needle down, hit it again to bring it up, use my um, knee to lift the presser foot, then I can just pull that thread right up and I'm ready to go. I want to have both of those threads on top of my piece so that they're not getting caught underneath. Then I can lower my foot again and I'm ready to stitch. And again, I've set it on number 45. I've set it on a two inch length and a 3.6 width. I also want to make sure that my needle down is engaged. I always want my needle to stop in the down position. So I need to hold that button just for a few seconds. Now I'm ready to start stitching. One of the things that you need to pay attention to when you're stitching with a blanket stitch or a satin stitch on a shape is that you always want to keep your needle and your foot at a 45 or at a 90 degree angle to the piece that you're sewing. You don't want this to be going off like this because your stitches are going to come off your shape. So by keeping that right at that angle, I make sure that my stitches are always going right where they need to go. I also want to make sure that as this straight part of the stitch comes down, it's going right along the edge of the shape on the background only. It's only the bite of the stitch, the part that jumps over to the left, that goes on the heart itself. Now as I'm coming to my cleavage, I need to do something a little bit special there. And there's probably other ways to do this, but I'm going to show you the method that I learned. I have an older machine without all the bells and whistles of these newer ones, so I learned how to do it. I'm going to stitch until I get right to that inner point. So I want to go one more stitch. Now I'm going to drop my feed dogs. And on this machine, I just push a little button over here on the side to drop that feed dog. And when it's pushed all the way in, my feed dogs are down. On my older Bernina, it's a knob that I turn, and that lowers my feed dogs. So almost every machine has the ability to drop those feed dogs. You just need to look to see how your machine does it. Once I have my feed dogs dropped, I'm going to take one stitch going in the same direction that I was. Then I'm going to pivot my piece so that my next stitch is going straight down in there. But because my feed dogs are dropped, it's not going to move this way. And I'm just going to get a nice little point right there. And I'm going to bring it back to there. I'm going to pivot again to start me going the direction I want to go around that heart. And I'm going to do another stitch. Now I need to make sure to engage my feed dogs so that as I finish that stitch, I keep going around my heart. I love the fact that because I've not got any pins in the way, I can just keep going all the way around this and nothing's moving on me as I go. And again, because I've got that stabilizer under there, everything's laying nice and flat. 
I don't think the stabilizer is quite as important on a blanket stitch, but if I was doing a satin stitch on here, that would be an, a real necessity to get a good quality stitch. Okay, now we're coming to this point. And I'm going to do one right there at the end. And then I'm going to turn and come back. And I will have a little bit of double stitching on this end. But I'm not sure there's any way to avoid that. I'm going to stitch until I come back to my original stitch. I don't want to really go over that, but I want to make sure I'm all the way there. So I'm right where that other stitch started. I'm going to lift my needle up. I'll pull my piece out. I'll clip off my threads. And then I want to pull all these threads to the back. So I'm going to go to the back of my piece and I'm just going to give a little pull on those threads. And what that's going to do is pull those up and with my little snipper, I've got all those there ready to pull to the, to the back side. And then what I usually do, make sure I've got all my stitches back here. One more to grab. So I've got four ends here. I just take these and tie them off on the back. I want Sometimes if you're sewing with these um, decorative threads, they're a little bit slick, and I don't want those coming undone, so I just tie those in a couple knots, and then with my little snippers, I can clip those threads off. And I'm finished with that. You can see how nice that looks on the back, and on the front, we've got a beautiful applique shape. Now I've finished my block. You can see I added a little echo stitching around the inside. I've got my blanket stitch all the way around. I've trimmed away the um, stabilizer that I used on the back, except for underneath the heart. And I want to show you what makes this really special. As you can see, it's still really nice and puffy. And once I get this put in a quilt and I add some batting underneath here, this heart is really going to puff up beautifully as compared to this particular piece where I used a regular fusible webbing, the kind that you s press to the fabric and stitch it down. That little heart looks pretty nice, but look how flat and stiff that is in comparison. And when I, when I put that in a quilt and put batting, it's not going to puff up the same way that I, this one will. The other wonderful thing about this is because I used a lighter fabric on top and a darker fabric, sometimes I may want to cut that away and that's really simple to do. I just pull them apart making sure that I've got my yellow fabric away. I make a little snip in here and then it's just a simple matter of going inside and I can cut this all away. There we are, and we've got our heart completely open. We can put the batting under there, and that little heart's going to puff up beautifully. So have some fun playing with fusible thread on your next applique project. <laughs>